I would probably sh myself if I actually like saw a demon, <laughs> like looked a demon in the eyes. Wow, I'm at my new setup. I think it's cute. I'm so excited. I also really like when I have my glasses on because I just feel more refined. I'm not sure. Okay, so we're gonna talk about my quick routine that I'm gonna do. I live in Vegas. Summers here suck in Las Vegas. I'm in the middle of the desert. I'm gonna first go in with, this is a really cool concealer I just found recently, Kim Chi Concealer. For this routine, I'm gonna start with my beautiful circles. I'm just gonna go in here first. I also have some breakouts going on on my chin because, you know, I'm a girl and it was like that time of the month, you know what I'm saying? That already brightened it up. So let's fix these little guys. So basically I'll use concealer first. This is a beauty blender by Beauty Bakery it has my favorite beauty blenders and also it's a uh, black owned business so support them so after that now i'm gonna let this really dry so i'm gonna actually just step away for a minute so since it's summer i use bare minerals in the summer which is like a dry powder foundation that turns into like a, a foundation once it's like sort of emulsified on your face I cannot use heavy foundations in the summer in Vegas. It will cause breakouts. It will just melt off my face. So I just pour some in the lid, take a flat brush, dip in, sort of tap off excess, and then buff that in. So let me finish this one second. So that's the base. Now, sometimes you'll have a little breakout like I have. So I'll take a more like refined brush and dip in and I'll just try to, oh yeah, much better. You can also do that with this under your eyes if you're wanting a little bit more of a concealed look. Today is pretty much a color pop day. So I'm gonna finish just my base by using a Build It Yourself Color Pop blush palette and bronzers. So I'm gonna go in and just contour and blush really quickly. And last for my non-existent eyebrows, I'm gonna use the Urban Decay Brow Blade in Brunette Betty. And then I'll go in with some Anastasia um, Brow Powder in Blonde, just to sort of fill it in. Yay for eyebrows. I'm gonna go in with some P. Louise um, in I think the shade zero, no, 0.5. And I just dot it on a little bit, maybe like three dots. And now I'm gonna blend it. Now I get super oily, like I said, like I already have oily skin and like acne prone skin, but like summertime in Vegas, before I do anything, I'm gonna set it with a, some sort of color that matches closely to my skin tone. So for most of the look today, I'm going to be using the ColourPop Going Coconuts because once again we're doing more of like a everyday easy wear. I don't always do like crazy makeup. And I'm gonna first just lay this base out. I think we're ready for some uh, scary stories. What do you think? So this is a story that is true and it happened in my definite like younger years of um, ghost hunting. This really big event that was happening and it was going to take place at um, the Stanley Hotel. And in this event there were a lot of really like well-known people in like paranormal that were there. This includes people like Dave Schrader was there who does, um, he's been a big radio host in Paranormal for years. Um, Billy Tolly was the DJ there. Um, this event also occurred after I went to Paranormal Challenge, which was 
with Travel Channel and that was um, 2011. Because of Paranormal Challenge at that time, it was like a year or two after that, um, I pretty much knew everybody, right? Like I would gotten to work with Billy on set and stuff and um, Dave was obviously one of the judges on that show um, and our team won. So like, you know, I was from Colorado, they're coming to Colorado, so they all knew I was gonna be up there. And I do believe this is one of the events that the Constantinos were at as well. Um, they were the famous um, ghost hunting husband and wife that died like super tragically a couple of years ago. But um, so I think I actually, for that one, pretty sure I went and picked the Constantinos up at the airport um, for them to go to, uh, I think Dave paid me to go pick them up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I had some friends that wanted to go as well. Um, I had a friend named Matt who was somebody that I had been working on a pilot with. Um, and I had um, worked with him, he was a camera tech. And so he wanted to go. And then one of my oldest friends named Sam, who passed away sadly, um, he passed away a few years ago as well, at a very young age. Um, Sam's one of my oldest friends and Sam, also wanted to go. So Sam knew it was gonna be this really big event. He drove out to Colorado from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. He made the trip to come out and um, he wanted to like be a part of it. So Matt, myself, and Sam split a room, the cost of a room, and we ended up getting like this really big suite. And um, we were gonna stay basically Friday through Sunday, I believe is what it was. So Friday night was going to be more relaxed. So most of the celebrities were staying in the presidential suite. And uh, this is hilarious by the way. So I was in there, um, I was in the presidential suite. I'd gotten invited in by, Dave had invited me um, one of my friends, Callie, had invited me. There's a few people that had invited me. And then I invited um, Sam and Matt to go with me because I didn't really want to be alone. Like, I was like, you know, at the time I was still starstruck because I was young. And I was like, um, oh my God, like the other paranormal celebrities are going to be there. Like, I'm just nervous. So I wanted my friends to be there with me. We got in the suite and I had no idea what it would be like because um, this would have been my first sort of paranormal celebrity party and I think I've mentioned before like a lot of these parties into turning into like just big drunk fuss you know um, and I sort of did learn my lesson after this one we're inside of this like huge presidential suite and if you don't know what the presidential suite looks like at the Stanley like it's huge and beautiful and extremely haunted so the Stanley Hotel was first um, inspired by, you know, Stephen King went and stayed there, said he had paranormal experiences, and that's the book, The Shining, that came about. Um, and so it is very haunted. The whole, the whole premises is haunted. Particularly, though, the presidential suite, it's completely separate from the actual big, large buildings. The presidential suite has several rooms inside of it, several bathrooms, and um, it is haunted with what they believe as to be Native American spirits and... Um, leprechauns and elementals like I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding so that night um, everyone was in the presidential suite and everyone's like happy to be around each other and of course that we were drinking and partying and yes I was one of them I was definitely one of them and so the lesson with this where I'm going with this guys is like on my other channel like GGD I've talked for years about how you should not drink or be under the influence while you're in a haunted location or investigating because you take the filter off, right? Like like when you're not afraid anymore, you're going to see some things, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're drunk and you're feeling confident from that like liquid courage, you're going to start seeing some shit. So what happened next was um, Billy came down and Billy was like having this big conversation about how um, he was telling me like, so last time I was here, swear to God, I saw a leprechaun in here. Like it was this little figure, it was running around and it was slamming doors. 
and um, everyone's been drinking for a while and, and honestly we, this went on we we hung out and drank for like two hours and or more it was more than that so um as billy's telling this story all this and everybody's in the same floor there's like three i think three levels to the presidential suite everyone's on the main floor like where the kitchen is and like the dining room and where everyone's quietly listening to billy tell this story and all of a sudden you start hearing doors slam upstairs simultaneously like slam 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 and everyone's like who's upstairs like and first of all i don't think anybody could have been running around fast enough to slam doors do you know what i'm saying anyways um so everyone was just kind of freaking out honestly we were just like okay well this is real clearly and it was like did not care that there's like a huge group of us hanging out talking about them um Maybe they were mad about it. Maybe they were showing off. I'm not really sure what was going on. So anyways, as we're kind of chilling there, Billy um, and I, I don't know, Billy has a big personality when he's hanging out with his friends. He's fun. Like he seems like the quiet type, but he's really fun to hang out with. And Billy and I started doing shots. Really bad idea. And we were both pretty gone at that point. And we were standing in the kitchen and we, him and I were the only ones that saw it. So at, at this point, people had, there was like a lot of people that had gone to bed. A lot of people that were um, not paying attention because everyone's been drinking, like it's party, you know, like. So I'm in the kitchen. I'm with Dave, Aaron Sager. So Dave Schrader, Aaron Sager, Billy, Tolly, and then Matt and Sam, my two friends. And um, I think I was like one of the only girls there. And Billy and I were like really deep in, I don't honestly don't even know what we were talking about because we were really toasted, you know what I'm saying? And we were in really deep conversation about paranormal and all of a sudden Billy and I look over at like, um, there's like the staircase, it's like kind of one goes down and then one goes up. We look over and we both saw, I would assume to be what's a leprechaun. It was, I mean, probably eight or nine inches tall so somewhere in there um it had a hat on it did have like like penny loafer things um like shiny shoes it was definitely a little bit blurred out but you could still see it pale like skin white skin and it had like a very like i want to say an evil laugh but i didn't feel afraid of it if that makes sense and it ran up the stairs it stopped and looked at billy and i and it took off running back upstairs billy and i were drunk first of all second of all we were like did you just see that did you just see it? yes i just saw it. like i just saw that so um we both freaked out and like didn't even know how to deal with it at that point now at this point you know a normal person or at least a non-intoxicated person probably would have been a little nervous been a little bit scared um maybe debunking, maybe going to look for it. But you have Billy and I who have been drinking for a little bit. And for some reason, we just thought seeing the lepre leprechaun was like the most hilarious thing in the world. So instead of doing anything about it, we literally just sat there and like laughed for like a while. For some reason, we thought that was the most hilarious thing in the world. And I mean, realistically, like, holy crap, like, I have just drank so much that my filter for safety has disappeared, and now I'm seeing leprechauns, and like, who's gonna ever believe that I saw a leprechaun? So long story short was, Dave and I, um, Dave was trying to engage in a conversation. For some reason, Billy and I couldn't stop laughing, and maybe that was the energy of, like, the leprechaun. And we couldn't stop laughing, and it, like, got on Dave's nerves because we couldn't stop laughing. And at that point, he wanted us to shut up, and he took the sink squirter, you know, like, that's on the sink that, like, you can handle squirt, and he soaked Billy and I down from head to toe. And that was the moment that I knew I should probably call it a night. And so I left. Now, obviously, in my head, I was hoping that was going to be, you know, the only paranormal experience that I had. I should have learned that part of the problem was that I was, like, under the influence. And I should have not been under the influence again. But what does Crystal do the next night? It's another party. 
And at this party, I'm going to be drinking with my friends again. So I, I was drinking with my friends, but this time we we're in the extremely haunted um, concert hall. And that's where like the big party of the weekend is. It's Saturday night. So, uh, wait till you guys hear this. So it's Saturday night, it's, it's time for like the big party. Um, I was really excited to just be around all my friends, got to dress up, and it was, you know, Matt, Sam, and I went um, together, and we were all like sort of dressed up, and, and uh, Dave had found us. Everyone was like sort of offering us drinks. They were happy that we were there. Billy even um, let me come up on stage with him and actually DJ, so that was really, really cool to be able to do that. Um, that's when the rest of the night, though, slowly starts to turn into a little bit of a blur. So I wasn't like, I've never, by the way, gotten to the point where I've been like blackout intoxicated, but I definitely had some shots in me with, you know, Dave and I and Billy and I and all of our other friends, whatever. And now I'm, I'm a little drunk. So what is happening is I am in the concert hall and it's huge by the way, and there's hundreds of people there with Matt. I don't know where like Sam went. I think he was pursuing a girl or something like that. And Matt and I start to look around after we've drank for a while. And as we're looking around, we've realized, holy crap, when did all of these people get there? I mean like, to us it looked like it could have been almost like a thousand people. I knew the person who coordinated the event and I did not think there was supposed to be that many people that were there. I couldn't find any of my friends because there were so many people there. Matt and I start looking around the room of the concert hall and all of a sudden we realize we think most of the people that we're seeing are spirits. And we were both drunk though so it was like hard to decipher but you could tell like there was some fuzziness around the people who were not human. Everyone was really kind. Um, people w would talk to Matt and I, but honestly, by that time of the night, even our friends, everybody, I think, was, you know, intoxicated. So even though we were drunk, Matt and I, we had noticed that there was, um, how do I describe this? These people were filtering from the basement area or like the lower level. And we decided we wanted to kind of watch, watch them as they came upstairs. And we were gonna go investigate and see exactly where these people were coming from. Cause I'm talking like a lot of people guys. So polite, politely, very politely and quietly Matt and I start following this group of people who's just coming upstairs and like piling in as if they've all been invited to this party. And we realize once we followed them, they're not really paying it, so it's like a, a stream of people moving upward and we're two people walking against the stream. We finally get downstairs and we're, we're watching all these people walk through and we realize which room these people are filtering from and it's from a room where there's a very famous ghost named Lucy. Now Lucy was 19 years old, I believe. She died in downtown um, Estes Park. She had been breaking into um, the Stanley Hotel in the 70s. She was a homeless teenager, like a runaway teenager. And finally the management came in and kicked her out and said like, you cannot stay here. Like we can't be liable for you. So she went down to downtown Estes Park and froze to death. And after she died, she returned to the Stanley Hotel and that's where she's been for eternity. She does not have any desire to cross over. She's one of the most friendly spirits I've encountered with many times. She will openly answer questions through all devices. Her room was where all these spirits were filtering from. They were wearing clothes that were not from our time. Um, honestly, I would say maybe the 20s and 30s. So anyways, when you, we, like Matt and I, we saw them walking out of the door from Lucy's room. So we went into Lucy's room and it was quiet. 
there was nothing in there. So it was almost like the door was like a portal. So we went in this room and we're looking around because we're like, are we going crazy? Like we're seeing hundreds of like ghosts that look like us just walking out and they're, they're not coming from anywhere. So we're standing in there baffled, just sort of staring at the ceiling. It's kind of like a empty concrete room that's been painted white. And all of a sudden, some of our friends that are famous, the famous friends came rushing in and they were like, well, we saw you guys walk down here, but when we were watching you walk down, you kind of had like this blank stare and you almost looked like you were floating and we got really worried about you. So what Matt and I think happened was there was so much electromagnetic energy from the spirits we saw coming up to the party that it made us appear blurry to our friends. They also thought Matt and I went down there and they, we were gonna like, you know, hanky panky or something in that room and we were literally not doing a thing. We were standing staring. Um, we tried to explain it to some of our friends but they didn't see it. They thought we were like totally losing it and Matt and I did not drink at paranormal locations ever after that. We literally went back to the hotel room later that night. By the way, like we went back up to the party after that, we still saw the spirits. And like I said, they did not look like they were from our time. It was hard to distinct though, because it was kind of like a dress up party where some people were wearing like dress up clothes and they looked different. Um, it was really strange guys it was really strange there's not always a moral to the story but a moral to that story is i was lucky i was at the stanley hotel for my first and last experience of drinking being under the influence in a haunted location in a safe friendlier haunted location because if i would have seen something dark and scary i don't know if i'd still be ghost hunting honestly so yeah, moral of the story is don't drink and be under the influence of a haunted place because you never know what you're going to see. And that's just legit. Legit. First and last time and never again. So that was my first episode of Creeps and Cosmetics. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked hanging out with me. I'm gonna be doing these uploads weekly, maybe one to two. If you guys have any requests on talking or telling certain ghost stories, please comment below. I'm gonna try to um, bring in my actual personal ghost stories too, um, but talk about some of the most cool, famous, worldwide ones as well. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Please make sure you give my video a thumbs up, comment below, and as always, I will catch you spooks next time. I would probably shit myself if I actually like saw a demon, <laughs> like looked a demon in the eyes.